Hello, my name is John, and this is the Mask Face Journal, and this is what I read this week. Third of August, 2016. Suicide Squad Rebirth, written by Rob Williams and art by Philip Tan. This is one of the few Rebirth tie-in issues that is not just setting up a new status quo, but is also telling a story. Synergy dictates that if a movie comes out, the book the movie is based on changes to be more like the movie. Luckily, the movie is pretty close to the comic to begin with, so the changes aren't that dramatic. The book intercuts between a once again fat Amanda Waller dealing with the politics of the Suicide Squad and trying to recruit Colonel Rick Flagg to lead the squad, with the squad mid-mission dealing with hundreds of superpowered terrorists and a bomb. I thought this was alright. Not great, not bad. The art is hit and miss with me, it feels a bit 90s at places, and I'm not a big fan of this sketchiness. Harley Quinn number one, written by Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti, and art by Chad Harden. I don't know how to talk about this, because it feels like somebody just played Mad Libs drunk and typed it up into a story. It opens at a spa with Harley and Ivy hanging out in the nude. Then we get a long recap of the previous series, which this doesn't seem to be very different from at all, so I have no idea why a relaunch was necessary. The writers are the same, the artist is the same, and the supporting cast is the same. There are a few Marvel parodies in here. The character Red Tool, who was introduced in the previous series, is an obvious parody of Deadpool, but the major plot thing that happens about halfway through the book is almost exactly a thing that happened in Fantastic Four. I'm not sure how to feel here, because for new readers, this is very dense with a lot of history exposited and a lot of characters to familiarize with, so it might be off-putting to try to delve into, and for returning readers, there are a lot of recapping of stuff you already know. The art is nice though. Green Arrow number 4, written by Benjamin Percy and art by Juan Ferreira. Not much to say here, the story moves on in a quick pace. Ollie is reunited with Diggle and his uh, computer hacker friend as they try to find out exactly how big this Ninth Circle organization is and how deep it is rooted in Queen Industries. I have a minor complaint that I can't really discuss that is involves the spoilers for the issue. It's not horrible, but it's a bit tired. Even if there's some sort of twist involving it in an upcoming issue, it's still tired. The art and the coloring continues to be really, really good in this. Justice League number two, written by Brian Hitch and art by Tony S. Daniel. All right, this was much better than the last issue. Not just an uncontrollable chaos. We got a threat set up as well as a few mysteries. There's not a lot of character moments in there yet, but a story where we get a super serious scowling Batman saying lines like, we need you to go to the center of the earth is probably going to be fun. The art is all right. Nothing special, but also nothing really wrong with it. Batman number four. Written by Tom King and art by David Finch. In some respects, this is very good. In others, it's kind of dumb. In a good way. The two supers, Gotham and Gotham Girl, has gone rogue and started killing. This was not all that unexpected. The reason for it, however, was. I'm not gonna spoil it, but it makes sense, especially with the cliffhanger reveal from the last issue. What's dumb is the way the Batman figures out who has knowledge of what turned the supers insane. It's like a Riddler scheme from the 60s TV show, and I don't think that's a coincidence. There's an homage, if you can call it that, to all-star Superman, to show the differences between somebody like Superman and an inexperienced, normal person with Superman's powers. This in some ways reminds me of a gritty version of Batman Brave and the Bold, with a serious Batman in a silly world. The art, it feels a little bit like Finch is trying to draw like Pulu, who was on the book before with Scott Snyder. I don't know if it's just the way he draws, and it's a total coincidence, or if it's deliberate. It's not bad anyhow. Superman number four, written by Peter Tomasi and art by Patrick Gleason. Superman and Son versus the Eradicator. That's the only way to describe this issue. But it's not just a slugfest. Both John and Superman get to have some emotional moments. And we get to see a bit of a character that, to my knowledge, has been absent for quite a while. Bibbo, a character that I'm only really familiar with through the Superman the Animated Series. Through this character, we get an insight to how the world is feeling after the death of the New 52 Superman, and how they are dealing with the new one, or the, rather, the old one, but the new one, the art. I thought it wasn't going to be very good when I saw the first page, but that has to have been a fluke because the rest of this book looks amazing. I hope that Action Comics picks up the pace because this doesn't feel like it's dragging and action is starting to feel like it is, and I like that I can have a new Superman book every week. 
So that was what I read this week. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and share this video to all your friends, all, all of your friends. If you dislike it or disagree with me, please let me know in the comments. Goodbye for this week.